So here we go. West Hills Wood, dining table project. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do it now real quick before we get into the rest of this. Hey, we had this glass sitting around for a couple of years. We made this project for Monica. These are barn door type things that cover up her entertainment system at her house. And they slide open and close. Very nice. Again, hard maple. Um, but I ordered the glass too thick. So I had to reorder her glass. And it all worked out. But then I wound up with two extra pieces of this glass, which is 3 eighths of an inch thick. And it's this specific size. And it's just, since it's tempered, you can't cut it. Uh, anyway, so how strong is it? Turns out there's a thing online that says at these dimensions you could support 1,745 pounds. Well, we're not going to test it, but we're going to go ahead and make a table out of it. Here's our plan. Everything is dictated by the glass, of course. And we said, you know, this is how big the glass is. we got to do it. How are you going to do it? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure the solution is in here somewhere. So we went over to Caneo Hardwoods, picked up our materials, did a pretty good job of estimating how much materials we're going to need. And uh, here's something that's cool about my chop saw. Some of these have a laser on them. Mine creates this shadow. It's got lights that show down on both sides from the blade, and it shows you precisely where the blade will hit. So that's pretty cool. I like that feature. Thought I'd show off a little bit. So now here you go, S4S means surface on four sides. Of course, there are six sides to this board. You can see the rough edge is towards us there, and there's a rough edge on one of the ends. So you just pay attention to which side you need to cut, and you go ahead and dimension all your lumber. It's pretty straightforward. This is uh, my table saw, it's uh, three horsepower. It's a saw stop uh, saw, so it's quite nice. We like it. That extra power is terrific. We're going to put these boards together with uh, these dominoes. They're very tight, up and down, I guess, away and towards us on that. They do not add strength, but they do help, especially on long boards like this, when putting things together. Um, just the alignment over this kind of length can be very difficult to deal with. And so that's what those things are for. And so you spread out the glue, make sure you get good coverage. Get all your clamps at the ready. And try not to make too big a mess. So our plan is to cut a rabbit on the edge of each of these uh, long boards for the glass to sit into. So it'll be like a picture frame. And what we're doing that with, there's multiple ways we could do it. And we chose to use a router. Of course, now we need a straight edge. And what you saw on that earlier shot there was we used glass as our straight edge because that's about as straight as we're going to get. Uh, it does make a mess when you use a router. Oh my gosh, what a mess. But, you know, there it is. So there's our straight edge, and you can see the result. Uh, I think we had to go down a little bit deeper than that. In fact, I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, but we used our straight edge along there and carved in a piece so that the glass could sit down and into it. Once we did that, that's when we trimmed our long boards to length. you got to be pretty careful when you decide to cut them to length, because you're pretty much set at that point. You can see we extended our, our long clamps because this wound up being such a long project. And we glued on our end pieces and figured it all out there. And here's our test fit, which is, as it says, always a bit scary. Eh? But this one, yeah, it worked out well, because... We know what we're doing. So there you go. Then you need legs. So we get some more material, which we already had. We purchased all this. We planned ahead of time, you know. And uh, carve it down. Now these are going to be glued together, so they'll be essentially four by fours or three and a halfs by three and a halfs or however that works out. It wasn't critical to us. We just knew we wanted them square at the top part of the board, top part of the leg anyway. We wound up tapering these using the bandsaw and our big ass sander, which you can't see in the background over there because that's covered up. But you gotta make sure you get complete coverage with this glue. And so then you do. And then 
don't stick them all together stick the proper parts together and just keep it straight and you'll be all right nice work look at that add a couple at the top just because you know hey the clamps clamps are handy they don't do you any good on the wall and what the hell add a couple more just because you want to These things take up a lot of space when you're making them, you know? <laughs> Jeez, one more, Ethan. Ah, that's what you wind up with. So there's four legs there, all glued up. Now, of course, we're going to have to dimension those. And we did. And then you taper them. Now, at the bottom of this stack, all the corners are pushed together, and this shows you the results of the taper. It's very subtle, but your eye will pick it up when you look at the table later. Now this is how we're going to attach these legs to the top of the table. There's a runner that goes up and down to our right side there, and we're going to run this 6-inch deck screw all the way up into it. Of course, we have to carve that dado, and we're going to use our table saw to do that. Um, we could use a dado blade, but we chose to do it this way. You run it through on one side with the jig, you pull it back, and then you flip your piece over, and this makes this dado groove, if you will, um, perfectly centered each time you do that to each of the legs. And then it fits right up in there and you countersink your big long deck screw and there you go. And glue that sucker in place. Now to attach that whole operation to the underside of our table, we use these. What the hell are those called? So you can see there's wood screw on one side and metal screw on the other. Well, you do some calculations, and that's what that square is for there, to tell me just how far I can go down so I don't poke through the other side, because we're working on the bottom or the underside of the tabletop at this point. And so we're letting these go down in there. And we did straighten them up. That one looks a little crooked in this image, but we just, everything got straightened up. Now you've got to try to back that nut off. So you hang on and unscrew it, and then you go do the next one. Space them out, make sure they're all good. In the end, you wind up with the underside of your sideboard, your long pieces, and it looks like this. And that's what we set our entire leg operation onto it. Well, before it gets too big and cumbersome and really weird, get busy with your sanders, boy. Now, we like that Spest Tool sanders. Um, we've had them for a long time. They are low vibration and, you know, it, it's real helpful. I got a variety of these things. And that was a, the larger one that we have. And here you can see our leg, uh, legs attached. Now, we haven't put our runners side side yet here. They're, it's strong away and towards us in this picture, but not too good side side. So we added the runners like this way, and that adds a, a ton of strength to it side side. And those are just glued up against both edges works out very strong. For finish, well, don't use the okay stuff. Use the good stuff. We like this product. I've been using it for a number of years. I'm not sure how I found it or where it came from, but I do enjoy this product. There's no not much smell to it. It dries fast and it's easy to work with. We like it. And it gives us more golden look to the maple that we have. There's a couple of shots of this in context now. And the lighting in the room is always going to produce some strange picture effects because I'm not a photographer. I'm just a woodshop guy. And there's the table in context. Look at that. It worked out beautiful. We do like that table. There it is. We're going to have many family dinners at that one, I'm sure. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the channel, like the video anyway. It's Harold Osmer, West Hills Wood. Like, subscribe, send beer.